Good afternoon folks, hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. Today, we have a hobby nightmare about a Warhammer 40k professional team making a manager's life so unbearable that he finally snaps. That'll be on later. For now, let's jump in to some hobby nightmares, shall we? If you want to send in yours, use the uh, email address down below, uh, hobbynightmares at gmail.com. I nearly gave up my personal one there. Hobbynightmares at gmail.com. Send in your hobby nightmares to there, and I'll try and get them read out as soon as possible. So, Michael is our first hobby nightmare today, talking about things going wrong in the hobby, or going right in the hobby, depending on what we do. He says, Hey North, for this story, please call me Michael. I have done. I apologise, I am not great at expressing myself sometimes, and I am definitely not a writer. So if this comes off as an ogre mashing on a keyboard, I apologise. No need to apologise, my friend. Absolutely not. You're all good. Just, just carry on doing what you're doing. You hear this line a lot, but I really hope you understand how meaningful your channel is. I have been just a listener in the void, but after hearing some of the great turnaround stories and inspirational experiences through Hobby Nightmares, I thought I should write in. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, fair. Fair enough. I mean, thank you very much for that. Uh, it's what the channel's here for, is to expose good and bad parts of the hobby. Anyway, now for a little background. I grew up as a closet nerd. I played sports up to college and until my 20s. I never really embraced or explored the nerdy side of me. In college, I got very much into board games and D&D. So much to the point that I opened a board game bar 10 years later. I was also uh, very poor at talking to women. I openly admit I was a bit of a simp. Okay, you know, it, it, it's good to admit it. It's good to admit it. I was a lost dog following anyone I could, hoping for a treat that never came. It led me down the path of disliking women for not liking me. Before, your, before you rant north, I got better. Thank you for saving me from a rant there. I got better. It was embarrassing, but the great thing about life is we can all change. Now I can make fun of myself for the stupid decisions I made back then. So, let's all have a laugh, a sip of tea, and get to the nightmare. Do any of you guys have a, a, a sort of dysphoria about yourself from back then? It's like you're a different person, so you don't really want to laugh at yourself back then because you're two different people, and you, you, you're frightened that your your older self might be like, you know, your younger self, sorry, might be like offended by the fact that you're you're laughing at them. No, just me. Okay, yeah, I'm I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I know. Anyway, about ten years ago, I opened a board game bar in the town I was living in. It was one of the greatest pains and accomplishments I have experienced in my life. We had great food, amazing cocktails, and about 1,000 board games for folks to play. We hosted D&D nights with full course meals, where the food, drinks, and games all matched up to a different fantasy theme each month. Dude, that's amazing. Where is this? <laughs> where is this? It was always a blast, and I got to meet some celebrities within the hobby. The business was on course to pay off the loans I took out by year five. I feel like this was an impressive feat because most small businesses that start with 80% of the funding coming from high interest loans can't even do that in 10 years. We were overflowing with customers. Weekends had a two to three hour wait for tables and we were getting requests to rent out our space very frequently. We were even looking to expand into wargaming by buying out the lease next door and doubling our space. For the first time in my life, I felt like I had found purpose and motivation. Yep, yeah, no fucking hell, dude. You're absolutely killing it there. By year four of the business, I fumbled my way into a relationship that was going okay. At the time, I felt it was my only option, and it was better to have something than nothing. Okay, yeah, before we go anywhere, that is a terrible reason to be with somebody. It's better to be alone, alright? It may not seem that way. But it's better to be alone than be in a relationship where you're, you're feeling that it's your only option and it's better that this than nothing. That's actually cruel on the person that you're with. Eventually, you're going to break the heart. All right? Better to do it honestly. Now, get out of there. You know? I still did not have value in myself, just my work. This is where the worst period of my life started. Okay? 
COVID lockdowns shut down the business. The city I, I was in had no plans or information for assistance or how businesses were going to recover. We also were not provided any time frame for reopening. We were not allowed to do business, but debtors and monthly ser service companies still charged us. Yet yeah, that's, a, that's a disgrace. If all business stops, all business stops. Do you know what I mean? That was the problem with, with, with the UK and the US. Sorry, if all business stops, if you want us wearing these face nappies and staying indoors, if all business has to stop, all business has to stop, including debts, including bills. All business stops. If I'm not earning, you're not charging. Go fuck yourself. That's how it should have gone. The government should have been paying subsidies to keep the lights on and keep the, keep the gas working, keep the water working, all that sort of stuff. Fine, no problem with that, right? And if taxes have to go up afterwards, after the pandemic, to, to pay for the loans the government took out to do all that shit, fine, not a problem with that either, right? Okay, cool, no problem. But if we're not earning, you're not charging. Sorry, no, no, absolutely not. Absolutely fucking not. Ridiculous. I know in the UK they did something like that. They froze rent for a while, so that people weren't weren't paying rent. That 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 was great. Yeah, do that. That was fine. Problem is, they only did it for a little while, for like the, the shortest time that they could, and then got back to paying rent again. It just, yeah, I, I, the, the the pandemic showed the worst of 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 the entire entire fucking world, in my opinion. Like it really was terrible. Hopefully we learn lessons from it, but, you know. The fact that this guy here has got his own business, you know, and he can't earn, but people are still charging him rent and, and debts and shit like that. Go fuck yourself. What do you want me to pay that with? Buttons. As a business owner, I was advised by the unemployment office that I could not collect unemployment until the state could figure out a way for me to apply. This was due to the fact I was still employed by my own business and there was not a solution for business owners at that time. Yeah. yeah. Self-employed people and business owners were shit on from a great height during the pandemic, I'm telling you now. As one of those people, yeah, we were one of the ones who were absolutely kicked well in the groin. Um, I had just taken out a loan to work towards exp expansion and refinancing, and the shutdown could not have hit at a worse time. I would spend all day inside panicking over the future. Would I have to claim bankrupt bankruptcy? How do I get a job during this lockdown? How do I pay my bills? It was a rough patch, and the girlfriend I had didn't really try to help me. She spent more energy in making sure she was safe and her life was stable. When, whenever I would bring up anything about my fears or the stress I was going through, she would deflect the conversation to how hard her job was. Usually, when I was going through anything difficult, I would ask one of my close friends to grab a pint with and we could chat about it. Due to the lockdown, this was not an option. I tried hosting a distance backyard party, but, uh, were con but most were concerned over COVID or they lived with folks with weak immune systems. After multiple attempts to connect with people, I then, began a ho I, I then became a hollow shell that just went through each day, depressed and without direction. It was like working retail all over again. I, I think a lot of us, man, I'm with you. I think a lot of us are um, now thinking back to the pandemic and going, wow, that was shit. That was horrible, you know? Um, and and it, it's got me to a point where, you know, a lot of, a lot of the guys I know have said if a lockdown ever happens again, they just won't do it. And I can, I can completely understand where they're coming from. If it's something like COVID with a very high, you know, very, 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 very high survival rate, like, it, it, the world's got to go on, dude. You, we've got to... You, we can't be fucking beggared. It, like, like, this guy here, his entire life turned upside down. We can't do that again. Can't happen again. Okay? Things have to stay open. People have to go to work. People have to pay their taxes. Just has to happen. Unless we get the Black Plague or something. Right? It has to happen. Take precautions, yes. If you're with somebody and you can work from home... Who, who, who's, who's immunosuppressant or something, look after them, right? But everybody else, go to fucking work. <laughs> like, let us go to work. It can't happen again. 
I'm telling you now. I, this is not the first story like this that I've read out. It's horrible. Anyway. When we finally alla were allowed to open three months later, I was focused and determined to save the thing I loved. I brought back all my staff, and to be able to cover their, their paychecks, I didn't pay myself. I took a night job throwing boxes at FedEx and planned to work it until the shop got back on its feet. Unfortunately, though, I couldn't save it. We saw maybe three to four customers a day, which is about 100 to 100, 150 less than the norm. Wow. Dude. Well, you kind of... You, you refuse to play ball there. You should have... No, no. I, it, it, yeah, it's horrible. I saw the writing on the wall and knew we would need to close down the shop for good. I explained it to the staff and started the process with a lawyer. The salt in the wound was the, was the last day there. I worked six hours at FedEx, then came in to close the shop. I felt pride in what I had accomplished and felt I should be the one to work the last shift. I wish I never did this. The comments I received while working that last shift made me want to close up and tell everybody to fuck off. Here's a fun list. And I quote, Can I just take some games home since you're not going to need them anymore? Unquote. Next one, and I quote, Hey, at least you're a straight white male. Most others wouldn't have even been allowed to make it this far. Unquote. <laughs> quote, Wait, you are charging people for stuff today? I thought we were celebrating our last day open. Unquote. Quote, can I have, uh, can I have that after you close? Unquote. Quote, before you sell off your stuff, can I come in early to beat the crowd? Unquote. And quote, I thought we were friends. Why are you charging me if you aren't even going to be able to sell this stuff tomorrow? Unquote. Not one person asked how I was holding up, if I needed any help, or how I was how I was going to recover after I lost everything. They just wanted my stuff and preached their virtuous politics at me. Dude, again, the pandemic brought out the worst than everybody. That, that, that is a, a good surmise of, of, of the kind of people. I'm not somebody who likes humanity. I don't. You know, I, I think that I like to celebrate the good ones who are out there because they are out there. Because we get, um, we get them on Hobby Nightmares a lot, right? But I'm not somebody... I'm quite nihilistic when it comes to humanity. I don't really like other people. Um, I genuinely think other people spoil a good time. You know? I've got my missus. I've got my family. I've got one or two best friends. Everybody else can fuck off. And and go go elsewhere. Right? Or, if I need to be around you, I'll be around you for one night a month. Where we go out and have a drink. And we have a nice laugh. And then I, I tell you to fuck off. And I, and I don't speak to you again until the next month. Right? It's just how I am. I got a very small inner circle. Um, people genuinely and generally annoy me, and you know, uh, because because again, if you've never worked in retail or a customer-facing service environment, you know you don't understand what that feels like. And I, I swear to you, you will be just like me. You'll be very nihilistic when it comes to the rest of the human race, and you'll be like, "Yeah, go fuck yourself." Like I'm I, no, you know. And comments like this that he was getting on his last day, I would have shut the shop. And I said, right, um, doesn't matter anymore. I don't need your business. Pack up your shit and fuck off. I'm closing right now. Why? Because I keep getting comments like this. No, you can't buy my stuff. No, you can't pick my corpse clean. And it doesn't matter what race or gender I am, right? I tried my hardest to do this. I put myself in financial ruin to do this for you. You don't appreciate it. Fuck off and get out. Like that, That's literally... I, I couldn't hold my tongue in this, situ in this situation, man. I, I can't stand people, honestly. They, they try they try to pick your corpse clean. You know, the li little vultures coming in. <laughs> somebody, somebody struggling. Let's go and let's go and kick the boot. Let's go and stick the boot in, and rob his socks. What, what, what are you? Fuck off. Absolutely. And do you know what? That politics thing. Hey, at least you're a straight white male. Most others wouldn't have made it. Uh, been allowed to make it this far. That came up a lot. In the pandemic, like people telling me, well, at least you're straight and white. What is that? Oh, yeah, the, 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 pan, the, the pandemic's going to go, do you know what? He's straight and white. Let's not infect him with the, with, the, with the virus. And let's also make sure that his business is all right. Yeah, doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Sorry. 
Don't happen. Fucking dickheads. Ugh. It felt like they were trying to pick my bones before I was dead. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Everybody was so wrapped up in scoring a cheap deal on my stock or asking for a hand for a handout. A couple of people were even asking for my personal decorations in the store, like the wood carved Monopoly board my grandfather made that was hanging on the wall. I could not believe the people I created this wonderful space with were all more concerned over being first to get my stuff rather than ask how I was. I just tried to stay uh, I tried to stay after with the staff and a couple of regulars, but it did not last long. I just wanted to be done with people and life. Mate, I, I hope that I, I I bet you took a lesson from that. You know what I mean? People may nod and smile at you, but the real ones one of the big skills in life, especially for us nerds, is recognizing when we've got a real one on our hands. You know what I mean? When we've got a real good brother on our hands who's gonna help us out. And it's going to be there for us, ride or die, right? Because people can can smile at you and nod. But then as soon as you fall over, it's like being in a, in a tiger cage with a tiger that you've known all your life. As soon as you fall over, that thing's on you and wringing your fucking neck in its mouth. Most people are like this. Honestly. Most people couldn't give a fucking shit about you. And will literally throw you under a bus to keep themselves alright. I honestly believe that. You, you, but you've got to develop a skill of finding the good ones out there. Because they are out there. You know? After the shop closed, I mentioned to my girlfriend the idea of moving from this city to get a fresh start. I didn't feel felt like... Uh, sorry, I didn't feel like I fit. Uh, and leaving town to go back to where I was originally sounded like a good idea. This immediately triggered a fight and she gave me an ultimatum. I had to, cho I had to choose between her or moving back home. I looked at her and simply said, and I quote, I am choosing happiness, unquote, and walked out without another word. Good lad. Well done. You're, you're, per you're somebody who's going to make it, man. You're going to make it in life, I'm telling you now. So within five months, I had lost a relationship. Not a bad thing, but I felt shit about it at the time. A business and most of the people who thought I, uh, who I thought were my friends. The best thing about hitting rock bottom is that you can't go any lower, right? I started to look at my life as a whole. In the woman department, none of the dating apps seemed to work, nor could I connect with women in real life. I was in a city with a lot of extreme political views and excessive virtue signalling. I am a fairly left-leaning guy, but I was treated like I was some sort of ultra-conservative douchebag there. Also, the people I thought were my friends at the shop didn't even care to reach out to me once. I was done with all of it. I felt like if I stayed... The dark thoughts would overwhelm me, and I was scared of what I would do. Uh, Michael Douglas in that in that in that movie when he goes on a rampage. That's probably my my feeling. Later that year, I moved back with my mum to my old hometown. I made uh, mental goals and life goals. I wanted to lose weight, find a job I could turn into a career, and find a group for gaming. Within four months of leaving that toxic environment, I got a great job. Lost 15 pounds, reconnected with childhood friends, and even met a girl. I realised that it was the people and location that I surrounded myself with that was the issue. You can't run or hide from your problems, but you can leave an unhealthy environment. It was way easier to perform self-repair when you're confident and comfortable in yourself. Dude, the, the, the logic coming off from you is astounding right now. I love this. Flashing forward a few years, I am now married to that fantastic woman. She would do anything for me, and I would do the same for her. We both respect each other's space, and love to play board games and video games. She is even in the D&D and board game group that I host every Friday. I can tell she isn't that into the lore, but she loves playing the game. A friend from high school is also in the group. He has recently gotten into Warhammer and suggested I take a look. Let's call him Dave, shall we? After listening to endless love and uh, uh, lore and hobby videos, I was hooked. I should I have suggested, sorry, I then suggested that Dave and I split a starter box of Space Marines and Tyranids, the Leviathan box, I bet. We both loved StarCraft, so it was an easy decision to make. 
Dave said this would work perfectly because he plays Tyranids already. Then, being the great friend he is, he tells me, Well, since you are a pumpkin spice loving noob, you will fit right into the Space Marines. The more I read into the lore and the hobby, the funnier I find that comment. And also, yes, I do love some pumpkin spice. Don't we all? Don't make me wistful for Halloween. I've really gotten into painting the models. I have painted a handful of D&D minis before, but I am still new to painting in general. I love putting on either your videos or Warhammer lore videos, and then just getting lost in painting for a few hours. I don't have a lot of techniques down, but I do try to watch YouTube as much as I can. After I showed Dave my first painted Space Marine, he showed me his attempt at a Termagant. Dave said he hates his painting skills because he paints like a five-year-old with a crayon. I told him I'm loving it and would happily volunteer to paint his units for him. I have attached what I've been able to do to complete so far. I am very much open to ways I can improve my skills and would love some feedback. Alright, cool. Let's have a little look here, shall we? What did you send me? I put it on my desktop last night before I went to bed. What did you send me? Oh, wow. Dude. Okay. Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. What One thing. Thin your paints. Thin your paints more. Alright. Thin your paints more. Do two nice light coats. Right. Over, over, the, over the, the black there. Right. Number two, edge highlight in grey, working up to white on any of the black spaces. That would also be brilliant. And then, cover the thing, if you can, in the recesses with a nice norm oil wash to bring out the darks and actually separate the dark from, from the light parts, you know what I mean? From the parts where you've already gone over to. Uh, and that's it, basically. That does, that's all I can say. That, that light blue is bloody difficult to paint over black, I will say that. Uh, brush strokes as well. I can see on the on the right hand shoulder guard there. Your your brush strokes are back and forth quite a lot, right? Make sure they're going in one direction. All your brush strokes need to go in one direction to make sure that there are no brush lines in the actual. It's like a, a nice stable color, right? Cool. But that's it. And those are all beginner things. They're, they're, those are things you will get as you go on. I, I've just told you there. Um, let's have a little look at some more. Let's have a little look here. Ah, now these look really good. These look really good. Absolutely. Brilliant stuff. I really like these. Lovely. I love that colour scheme. You know? With the blue carapace on top of it. I love that. That stands out really nicely. Not too hot on the on the brown one. I think that looks a bit... It blends in a bit too much. But I love the blue. And you've dry brushed it as well on top of it. So you are developing skills that you're definitely going to need later on. You're doing really well, man. You see, if you're painting marines, just make sure that you, you hold those things that I said. And you rem remember what I said. You've chosen quite a difficult painting scheme there. Um, but at the end of the day... It's looking good so far, and if those are your first models, then dude, you're, you're doing a fucking good job. Uh, let's have a little look here, shall we? At the last one. Your normal marines, your bog standard marines. Yeah, oh, I actually like that colour scheme. I like that colour scheme a lot. Alright, so. What I would do is just tidy up the blue where it's touching the black, because it's quite obvious where you've gone over it a little bit. That's no problem. Take you back to about two seconds a model. Like, bop, bop. You know, tidy it up all the way through, right? With, with, a, with a new black. Edge highlight all of the black. Maybe add another colour onto the model. Because it looks cool now. But the black doesn't really pop or stand out. You know what I mean? So maybe add like, like a shin. A shin guard colour. Or something. You know that looked pretty cool. Um, so I would just do that. I, I would tidy up the blue. Add another maybe a metallic colour to, to one of, his, sh to one of his, uh, his shins. Or his knee would work as well. That would work. And then edge highlight the black. Once you've done that, you've got basically a finished model. Maybe Drakenhof Nightshade over the blue too. 
that would dampen down the blue a tiny bit, but it would give it a load of definition in between the, the nooks and crannies there. That would make it look really, really cool. So uh, that's how I would how I would go from here. But I like the colour scheme. Also, the bits in between the armour, do you know, like the... Um, uh, the grids in, in, in between the elbow, you know what I mean? You can see it there on the right-hand side, where he's holding the flamer. That should be different coloured as well. Maybe colour that grey or something. Just just to differentiate it and show that, yeah, it, it's it's webbing of the armour underneath. If it's all black, nothing stands out. You know, you, you want different parts of the model to stand out and pop. Uh, change the colour of the eyes too. The colour of the eyes shouldn't be the same as the as the colour that's on your, your armour. Um, but yeah, these are all nitpicky, but they will make your, your army look, like, a lot better. It looks good right now. You know, it, it looks very, very, very good. Get it, it looks like a very good beginner-level paint job. Very good beginner-level paint job is what that is. Um, but carry on. Carry on. It will get better. I can tell by the way you paint you're going to get better, so just go for it. We used different colours for the termagants because we thought it would be fun to group them together with bigger bugs, almost like the military does with squads, platoons and companies, etc. Our plan is to paint first, then the law will come second. As for my marines, I love the concept of creating my own chapter. For their law, I like the idea of a star system that is cut off by the warp, separating them from the Imperium and their supply lines. They are still loyal to the Emperor, even though they are alone in the dark. They stand by their principles and oaths. They will defend their world from bugs and other terrors with unwavering pride and loyalty. This is still a draft, but I like what I have so far. That's cool. I like that. And it suits, like, if you can throw your friend's Tyranids in there as well, then you've got, like, you know, two arch enemies fighting each other over the, over the same planet. It would be amazing to do games and games and games with, with your friend there. That would be really cool. Um, also... Um, I, I, I like the concept. I like the concept. I do like the concept. It is cool. Um, we still have not played my first game yet, but they should be coming up in the next few weeks. I want to finish the painting before I play. I don't like the idea of grey models on the table. Neither do I. I am pretty excited and not sure what to expect. Who knows? It may suck, or I may go broke buying from Games Workshop. All I know is, I am happy... And that's what's important to me. I have an amazing wife, a new house, great friends, a solid job, and I have time every week to either paint or play various games. Although the journey was not easy, it wouldn't I wouldn't change anything in it for the world. Thanks, Michael. Dude, what I I, I, I don't want to applaud it's cheesy, but thank you for sending that in. That was brilliant. I love that. I, I absolutely loved reading that. That was brilliant. Wonderful stuff, and well done to you for turning your life around. Using the hobby too, turning your life around, using the hobby, and using it to channel all of your 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 ethos and drive into what you want to do next. Absolutely brilliant stuff. And I hope that's inspired a lot of other people out there to not give up. To not give up. You will get there eventually. Everybody gets kicks in the kicks in the bollocks. Sometimes they're massive kicks in the bollocks. You know I've had them. If you know the channel, you know I've had them before. You know? Michael's had them. You can recover. You, you've got to step back, compartmentalise your problems, and compartmentalise what you need to do about them, where you want to be in five years, and then create plans to work towards those goals and stick to them. But that takes discipline, it takes stoicism, and it takes self-reflection. Those are the three main things that they, they're going to take. Discipline, stoicism, self-reflection. Remain calm and go towards your target. Go forth and conquer. Uh, Dinah here says, Dinah here, you, you're Baldur's Gate player. The good Baldur's Gate games, not the, not the new. Um, Let's all have sex with bears. <laughs> not, not that one, right? The Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Hi, North. I promise this will be a quick one, but it deals with my local manager, Glenn. And him finally snapping at our local gaming group. I will freely admit that our local scene is a bit sweaty. I recently went over to Horus Heresy because the 40k game and scene is just full of gotchas, and to be honest, even in the tournament scene and casual scene of 40k, no one is really interested in who you are. 
No one cares about what inspired your army, why you chose the colours, and what you want to do with them going forwards. They just want to smash you with, the ta with their tailored list and move on. Warhammer 40,000 to me is all maths, all odds crunching and gotchas. You have to know all the codexes in the game or you stand a good chance of getting annihilated in every other game you ever play. A few months ago, with the advent of Horus Heresy 2.0, a friend invited me to head to his club and have a go at the game there instead and I was absolutely hooked. The game is fine. It's basically 40k 7th edition without the nonsense formations and streamlined a little bit. It's the community that impresses me though. It's astounding. You walk into a hall and all the lads there are dying to see your army and ask you questions about what motivated you to make the choices that you did. What books in the series you like the most and what kind of list you're bringing to, to battle that evening. It's just such a different vibe. And when I saw Glenn at our local club, I asked him if he if I could share his story on the channel. So, here it is. Yeah, I will go with that. The main reason why uh, Horus Heresy players gatekeep so so, so vi vicarious, not vicariously, but so viciously. You know, the reason why they, they gatekeep so viciously is because um, they very much do celebrate all of your accomplishments that you do in the hobby. Like, if you go in and you and you have a one squad of word bearers like i did right you go in with, with one squad of word bearers because you're really 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 passionate about gray word bearers you know loyalist word bearers they will hear you out and they will sit there and go that's an amazing idea i can't wait to see the finished product and when you look at them you can tell they mean what they're saying because they're passionate about horus heresy right um if you try that in 40k you'll get uh yeah uh, yeah. Anyway, I rolled a six, so that one's dead. Right, and th there's no, there's no back and forth, or at least very little back and forth these days. It's all cutthroat. Here you go, you know. Whereas Horus Heresy is for the dads. It's for the dads who like to get together over a cup of tea and talk about Horus Heresy lore and legions and things like that. It's a very dad-oriented hobby, and as I'm now in my mid thirties, it's right up my street. I love a bit of Horus Heresy. Anyway. It's become a bit of an urban legend, really, but Glenn was a Games Workshop manager, as I said earlier, who had taken over the store from the previous manager, Tom. Now, Tom was essentially a bit of an arse. He was the most pompous and self-congratulatory dude you could ever have hoped to stumble across. The group he fermented in the store were just as bad. An eight-man team, quote-unquote, and I put the quote marks in there on purpose. You see, they actually thought they were some sort of sports team. They wore black nylon t-shirts with lava patterns on them. I won't say the team name because they, are, they still go to tournaments now. They gave each other cringe nicknames like... <laughs> They gave, <laughs> they gave each other they gave each other cringe nicknames like the dark destroyer <laughs> for the only black guy on the team <laughs> God no Oh no Oh If any of you know why I'm laughing so much like you know you know you know uh there are certain objects out there that you can go and buy from certain shops for certain ways to get self-pleasure uh, that are called the Dark Destroyer. <laughs> I'm just a little hilarious. I, if, if that's like an ironic nickname, I, I just, I got, I've got to commend them for that. But knowing teams like this, it's probably like a really serious nickname. Like, yeah, he's the dark, he's our, he's our Dark Destroyer, man. You know, it's really like one of them. Oh my God. Uh, for the, oh, so... So they gave each other cringe nicknames like the Dark Destroyer for the only black guy on the team or the Chieftain, <laughs> quote unquote, the Bull, quote unquote, or God help us, <laughs> the Dominator. <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm going to have to have a cross sip of tea one sec. Oh. oh, 
Jesus. Right. <laughs> the Dominator. <laughs> what a dickhead. Sorry. Sorry. If, if I saw, if I was playing guy like that, you couldn't help yourself, could you? If you're a bloke, you're like, well, you're, you're Dominator. Right, okay. Imagine being, imagine being called the Dominator and losing a game. You could never lose a game. <laughs> Just so funny. Uh, yeah, he says. Now listen. I have nothing against team names and team uh, uh, teams and team names per se. Not at all. If you want to organize into that into one that sorry, I'll read that again. I'm sorry, I'm still a bit flustered from the team names. I'll read that again. Now listen, I have nothing against team names uh, and teams per se. Not at all. If you want to organize into one, that is all well and good. The thing is, there is a time and a place for it in my opinion. A tournament where your team is practicing and looking for new recruits, no issues there. A tournament or competitive event where you're competing as a team, knock yourself out, have fun, absolutely brilliant, looks great. A Games Workshop store hobby night that is specifically named Parent Team Up Night, not really the place you should be bringing your ultra try hard antics. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. There's a time and a place. To be honest with you, if I was playing in a tournament and I saw somebody wearing a team t-shirt, I, I would still take the piss. Like, I, I just couldn't stop. I, I'd just be like, well, are you the are you the messy of your group, are you? You're the, you know, you've you got a team name. Yeah, what's the team name? Oh, brilliant, brilliant, yeah. And, and in, inside, I'll just be chuckling to myself. I'm just like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I will skip a load of weeks here, but each time this team came in, they were loud obnoxious and over the top nothing beyond the pale but always shaking their fists in their opponents faces cursing their dice rolls cheering whenever anything went against the opponent as a team mind you and shit like that what's well, kind of bullying isn't it if they're all cheering against an opponent together what bunch of dickheads this one evening i could see that glenn was not feeling well he was pale had a headache and was kind of done <laughs> The store was packed with parents playing 40k with their kids and other parents, all laughing and having a good time. Then, the team walks in, and I have to be honest, their behaviour reminded me of that fucking volleyball scene from Top Gun. <laughs> they should have just pay played Kenny Loggins on the stereo or something, as they high-fived and backslapped during games. <laughs> oh... Oh, it's precious. It's so precious. There was one father-son team who had just started the hobby, but had won a few games with the Eldar team, with their Eldar team up, and they were really happy. Nice people, too. So the pro team challenged them, of course, to a 2v2 game, and, of course, smashed the living hell out of them. You see, all the father and son team had were two star collecting Eldar boxes each. Whilst the team, obviously, had extremely tailored and meta lists at the time. I forget what they, what they brought in, but it was causing a lot of grumbling, as it was essentially the Stonewall meta of 8th edition at the time. They cheer in the father and son's faces, high-fiving and telling them to go learn their rules before challenging an actual pro team again. Oh my god, these guys are from like fucking... <clears throat> some sort of high school sitcom back in the day. Yeah, nice guys. All the time, I see Glenn looking at them at the till, barely able to stand, sweating, vein bulging in his head. The team then decide and announce very loudly that since there are no worthy challengers at the evening's event, that they will play each other in a 2v2 game. A friendly one, of course. Their armies deploy and everybody kind of makes to leave the store as there is only one main table there and it's obvious this mega game is going to take all night. Parents night be damned. <clears throat> then Glenn walks over, well staggers really, and, and slurs his speech saying, and I quote, You know, you guys are real uh, ass hats. Your dice fucking smell... And I need to clean this table, so... Unquote. That's literally what he said. 
Does it sound coherent to you? It shouldn't. He turned the entire fucking table over. <laughs> the whole thing. Models and scenery went flying everywhere, and there was much screaming and shouting. Thing was, no one but the team cared about the models. With, it, with his last bit of strength, Glenn had turned the table over and then collapsed. I was a trusted guy in the store, so I helped the store close, got the models, what was left of them, cleared, and called an ambulance. There was a wait for the ambulance, so one of our regulars just drove Glenn to the local emergency room. It turns out Glenn had a really bad toothache for ages, and eventually it had gone septic. He didn't know, he didn't know though, because he was huffing his mum's codeine, among other things, brushing his teeth and washing it with mouthwash, and was hoping this, se this severe infection would just go away. <laughs> That's such a man thing to do. Of course, he'd been swallowing the, in the infection in his sleep for days. Oh my god. He could have fucking died. Oh no. <clears throat> oh no. He got the offending tooth removed, and was on very strong antibiotics for several weeks, before returning to work. He told me that Games Workshop had replaced the models of the pro team after they had complained, but when the team wanted Glenn fired, of course they did, Games Workshop politely reminded them that Glenn was likely delirious from the infection. They can't fire him for being sick. Good on Games Workshop. Well done, Games Workshop. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. <clears throat> A nice get out of jail free card there. We saw the team again and although they did take the piss, they were also much quieter until Glenn eventually left for another job in the city. I'm glad he has found a home with us in the Horus Heresy group and even collects the best legion. The only legion, the Sons of Horus, I disagree. Thank you North Diner here. Cheers man. Thank you very much. Yeah, j Just bear in mind also, if you ever call Games Workshop, and they get a whiff of douche about you. They're not going to do anything that you say. I'm just going to say that right now. If they get the barest whiff of you being a self-entitled little douche. They're not going to change anything. Or even take your complaint seriously. It's going in the bin. Right? You catch far more flies with honey than with bile. I'm telling you now. Anyway. Love your long time. I will speak to you on Monday. It's been a great start to the year lads. Let's keep it going. If you like what I do. The subscribe button is down below. Please, please, please continue subscribing. Help me towards my 20,000 subscriber target by the end of the year. I love you all a long time. I'll speak to you on Monday. See you then. Have a good one. Bye now.